What's up YouTube? It's time to make some hard cider. If you haven't made a hard cider and you have the brewing equipment and you enjoy a hard cider, make one. I'm gonna show you how easy it actually is to make a hard cider. And I'm gonna do two batches because two is one and one is none. And since I have the space for both these guys in my fermentation chamber, I'm gonna go ahead and run two at the same time. I got myself 10 gallons here of apple cider. The key thing that you wanna remember when you're looking for apple cider is the preservatives. You don't want potassium sorbonate as your preservative. So make sure you're looking for something that is fermented, either cold pressed, um, but does not have the potassium sorbonate in it as the preservative. Best time to shop for this is right around the uh, cool season in the winter. It seems to be when they sell the most uh, variety of apple ciders. The thing that's weird about that is the best time for a hard cider, summertime. So I'm gonna get these guys going, I'm gonna get them fermented and I'm gonna get them aged and then I don't know if I'll put them right on tap right away or if I'm gonna wait until summertime for them, but I'm gonna get them going. Steps to this are pretty easy. Step one, get yourself a whole bunch of cider. Step two, we're gonna put it all in the fermenters and I'm gonna hit it with a specific apple cider yeast. And I'm actually gonna be using Safe Cider AB1. This is a specific yeast for making hard ciders. I'm going for more of like a dry hard cider, like a strong bow, nothing that's super duper sweet, give you that bad hangover. I found that this yeast, this safe cider yeast, actually ferments out a lot cleaner and converts a lot more of the sugars than some of the other yeasts I was trying to use when I was making hard ciders. The nice thing about that is, if you want a sweet cider, you could back sweeten it, and if you don't, if you want a nice dry cider, you're done. Let's pour these in and get started. The great thing about doing hard ciders, they're easy. You take out the whole mash portion of the whole boiling, all that stuff. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I can still do math. And you still end up with a nice brew. <clears throat> Get it in there. I hope my recycling bin's empty. How fast do you think we could pour these? Did somebody time that? If you're brewing though, you should be having fun with it, right? These ciders, you do want to shake them because you will get, a good cider will give you sediment. I don't know if it's like super necessary that I put the lids back on, but I'm just doing it. I got some drips in my garage here. Do you want ants? Because that's how you get ants. You guys get that quote? That's a good one. I missed that show. Now both of these are gonna be exactly the same because it's the exact same um, apple cider. So I'm just gonna take the specific gravity reading of one. I'm not gonna do both of them because I don't need to. Something you can do with these hard ciders as well if you're trying to look to bump up the um, Alcohol, I found brown sugar. Very good for adding a little bit of extra flavor and alcohol content to a hard cider. We are sitting at 1.01, oh my gosh, look at this. You're, you're hefty. 1.048 is actually where that's at. That'll work, that will work. I can deal with 1.048. I, sh I can deal with that all day long. 1.048, we're just gonna go. Get some of my specialized tools that I use. It's just that simple. Fix your top. I gotta check and see what I, I think I got the stick set for 70. One's in. Two's in. Get my backup temperature gauge. I'm gonna ferment this at 70 degrees and uh, check it out here in about a week. So that is my fermentation chamber. If you guys are getting into brewing and you wanna make lager and have more consistency with your beers, definitely make a fermentation chamber. Those are not hard to make and they're very inexpensive. I got a video here, I'll put in the link description on how I made that one and then how I expanded it so that it can hold two of the uh, fermentation buckets that I got in there. But even if you just wanna do it for one to be able to have better temperature control, it's totally worth it. It locks in that temperature and it makes you, it gives you much more consistency batch to batch. So now the thing that's required is time. 
Finally, it is time to get these hard ciders carbonated. They took forever to actually finish out. The fermentation took over two and a half months, which is surprising, being that this is a super duper simple kind of fermentation process. But they both fermented out completely. They're nice and dry the way I want them. Um, my starting gravity was 1.048. These both finished out at one. So that's giving me a alcohol by volume of 6.3, which I'm happy with. One of these I'm gonna keg as is. The other one I'm gonna put on top of uh, some nat natural flavoring, some peach. See how that comes through, a little peach hard cider. Got my kegs sanitized. There shouldn't really be much sediment on these at all. Something that I did find kind of weird, the first batch that I did fermented fine, or start, the fermentation started fine. The second batch just kind of stalled. And between the, the yeast I used was the same for both of them. I just thought it was weird that the first one that I put in there in the back, same, same exact recipe, same exact cider, um, started to ferment pretty much immediately and fermented out on a more regular schedule. And then one, the, the other one took, you know, over two and a half months. So thought that was just kind of odd. Even though the yeast I got was a two pack, could have been one of the, one of them was, you know, from a, ba a different batch and wasn't this, was older or something like that. I don't know. Don't know. We're gonna go a little bit above 50. I like my hard cider is kind of bubbly, <clears throat> high carbonated. So I had the peach flavor first. Done. A little bit of a column A. This is the peach cider. And a little bit of column B. This is our simple cider. These turned out really good. The basic one is exactly that, it's basic, but I didn't do anything to it. I just wanted to see how the flavor turned out by just making it straight out of the bottle. It's nice if I add a little something to it, you know, a little bit of wine or even just a small amount of back sweetening. And I think the next time I make this recipe, I will back sweeten that one. The peach one, the peach one turned out on the money. That one is fantastic. And I think maybe going forward, that's what I'll do. I might want to double up on the peach. It just has a hint of peach, but it doesn't have any of the sweetness coming through from the peach. So I'm thinking maybe next time I'll try two bottles in a five gallon batch and see if that bumps it up so it's a little bit stronger peach flavor and maybe just a small amount of sweetness to it, not a lot of sweetness to it. But right now these are both pretty dry, like champagne level dry, which isn't bad. They're very drinkable, very light and refreshing, which is great for the summer. But to add a little bit more complexity, I might do that. Now when you're making these, one thing you're going to want to do, whether you're making the flavored one or the non-flavored one, as these ferment out, you're going to want to hit that like and subscribe button. That really helps my channel, helps my videos, and helps me keep making these. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, keep home brewing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs>